Hey, welcome back to Idaho Fabricator. Today I'm going to talk about how I managed to shoehorn that LS3 motor into my 53 Chevy truck. Um, I had a lot of issues that I had to overcome, oil pan, um, firewall clearance, radiator clearance, uh, ground clearance, and uh, so today I'm going to try and answer a lot of questions that I had when I was figuring out how to put this in. and. Uh, I hope this helps you guys out there do the same thing, so stay tuned. All right, well, the first obstacle that I had to overcome was fitting the motor by the cross member, and uh, this is a stock Chevrolet Corvette oil pan. It's really nice, and um, but the sump is too far forward. So let's go underneath, and I'll show you what I was talking about. All right, so this is the oil pan that I ended up going with, and this is the GM Performance. Um, I think they call it their... Um, I think they call it their hot rod oil pan conversion kit or something. And uh, as you can see, it's a rear sump pan. It has the same oil capacity as the Corvette pan, but this comes down a little bit farther. And so this gave me the clearance I needed for the cross member. Originally, I wanted the motor down a little lower. The problem with bringing it down a little lower was I ended up with three and a half inches of ground clearance between the ground and the bottom of the pan. And I, I was a little uncomfortable with that. That's a little tight. So I chose to raise the pan, the motor up, so that it was, so that this cross member would protect it if, if something were to hit it. And uh, so the height of my motor was determined by the ground clearance I wanted for the pan. So I wanted to show you that so you get an idea of that obstacle. And, and, and let's go up on top and I'll show you uh, um, why some of the other things that that happened as a result of moving this up so let's go upstairs all right so because i raised the motor up originally um i wanted the the motor when the motor was a little bit lower it actually allowed me to go under this part a little bit which would give me more clearance up front here okay but because i raised the motor up um I had to pull it back to get the clearance over on this side of the firewall. Now there are guys that recess their firewall, they come back here and they put like a three or four inch recess in there. But you know, I really like these raised pieces and the details and stuff. I think it looks cool and I think that uh, it's just part of the character of the truck. It's, it's you know, I'm, this truck is kind of a blend of old and new and, and uh, I just like it. So I didn't want to uh, carve up my firewall. And the other reason I didn't want to carve the firewall up is when you recess this, it encroaches into the interior and it, it makes it a little more difficult to mount your AC stuff, your heating and control, your computer stuff and all that. So um, I mean, that it would solve one problem with a motor, but it would create another problem with mounting all that stuff under your dash. So. That's another reason why I wanted to keep this original dash the way it is. So um, now, because I raised the motor up, that brought another issue up to in place. And that issue is I had to put a tunnel uh, into the um, into it. I don't know if I can get this off. It's it's really a close fit. <laughs> See, because the motor comes up, the floor gets in the way. So you're going to have to do some type of a tunnel. It's not very hard. Easy to do, really. Um, and uh, that will give you the clearance you need. Because not only do you need clearance for the tranny, but if I choose to go with a floor shifter, you need clearance for the floor shifter as well. So that's another issue that you're going to have to overcome. Also front here. Now when you're fitting your motor in, you're going to need your radiator. You're going to need 
your core support attached, okay? And this moves a little bit, all right? And so what determines where this goes are your fenders. So you go ahead and you put one of your fenders on and that'll put your core support where it needs to be so that you can do your exact measuring of your motor, okay? I bought the radiator, it's got an electric fan, and another obstacle that I had was getting enough room for this radiator. So this stock core support, uh, it used to, this, this piece here was open and it used to go across like this and the radiator would actually, this whole radiator would sit out here, okay? And it would bolt to these holes. So what I did was I removed that piece so that I could bring the motor, or the uh, radiator, excuse me, in about two and a half inches. And then up front here, there's a crossbar, which gives it side to side strength. This used to be welded on the inside, and I just removed the welds and moved this out to the outside, tacked it in place, and that way it gave me plenty of clearance for the radiator. It moved it in two and a half inches, I put these little caps on top of the core support just to dress it up a little bit and make it look, you know, kind of factory. And then that gave me the clearance, the necessary clearance I needed here so that everything would fit. So, let me see. Oh, let's go over to the other side because I want to show you. I mean, oh, first of all, while we're on this side, the exhaust manifold on this side fits great. I tried to use the factory exhaust manifolds, but they don't work, at least in my application where the motor sits and how high it is and, and, uh, and whatnot. It, they just didn't work. They were too wide and I would have had to put a pretty serious um, scallop in the frame to have clearance for them. So I went with these hooker header uh, cast iron um, exhaust manifolds. They say they're good for 500 horsepower, so that's good enough for me. Um, they use the factory um, Chevrolet Camaro uh, exhaust manifold and gasket set, so that's cool. And uh, But the problem is over on this side. Because the starter's on this side of the motor, these manifolds kick out a little bit. They kick out enough that I had to put a scallop in the frame right here so that I would have enough clearance for the exhaust. I measured this angle, okay, and then I cut the scallop here, and then I cut the scallop down below at the same angle. And then what I did was, I took a piece of pipe, and I think it was seven gauge pipe, which is 3 16 and uh, I think it was eight inches in diameter. So get a piece of eight inch diameter pipe. In fact, here's the piece here, okay? And I just, yeah, seven gauge. So I just cut it off, right? And then set it inside the frame, at the angle, and then marked it with a Sharpie and then cut it off so it fits in there and uh, just welded it in place. So it's real easy to do. Um, I thought about just bending it, you know, over a mandrel or something, but this is way easier and it's a nice, you know, nice clean radius. So that was another obstacle that I had and uh, I solved it by scalloping the frame. So let's see, what else? Um, Oh, let me give you the measurement here, because I know that when I was doing this and looking things up, I was, uh, you know, I'd look at pictures on the internet of guys with trucks like this that were putting LS motors in, and uh, I'd be like pinching and squeezing them to try and, you know, figure out, okay, how far is that, and kind of get it a mental picture so I knew that I was in the ballpark. But um, now that I got it all set in place, I'm gonna give you the secret dimension. Yeah, it's secret. Well, not anymore. Okay, so these are the stock frame horns, right? Nothing's changed there. And I'm just gonna stick a tape measure in here and I'm gonna touch it on the harmonic, uh, harmonic balancer, right? And I'm gonna come to it and on the outside of it, it well, the inside is 12 and a quarter. So from the inside of this frame horn to the harmonic balancer, is 12 and a quarter inches. So I hope that helps. Um, I know that that's some measurement that I really wanted to have. <laughs> so I'm sharing it with you and um, that helped a ton. Um, 
I'm trying to think of anything else right now. There's probably going to be more stuff that's going to crop up, and uh, and I'll cover those. Uh, I'll cover those in another video. So I hope this helps you get started shoehorning that LS motor into your truck. Um, it looks cool in there, especially with the fenders on. It just looks betcha. So um, I'm really getting excited. Uh, I really want to start this thing up, but I got to be patient. Make sure I got all my ducks in a row. So, um, hey, thanks again for watching. Give me some likes and shares, and, and uh, I appreciate subscriptions. Uh, like I've said in the past, I, um, I really want this channel to grow and, and, and just get... Um, just to be able to help guys and gals out there that are fabricating stuff and, 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 and just have fun with it. So I'll see you next time. This is Idaho Fabricator. Thanks again for watching.